Well, I was really pleased and proud of the way our guys responded. You know, in this last game, I thought we played really hard in a game. Uh, played for 60 minutes, tried to finish plays, uh, played the next play regardless of what happened in the game. Uh, when we had bad plays, it wasn't always perfect execution, um, but I think we competed in the game like I'd like to see us compete. Um, you know, the question is, is can this become a part of who we are or does something bad have to happen for us to respond in the way we need to respond? And uh, I think that's a challenge for all of us. And that's a challenge for all of our players and the leadership on our team uh, to continue to do the things we need to do. You know, guys that practice well, played well in the game, guys that prepared well, you know, played well in the game. So that that's something that we need to continue to do. Um, I think the rivalry between, you know, Tennessee and Alabama is, you know, one of the the, the old great rivalries in college football. It goes way back. I know it means a lot of a lot to a lot of people, you know, in our state uh, certainly means a lot to me and uh, hopefully we'll get that translated to our team. Um, you know, Josh Hype has done a really good job at, um, at Tennessee. Their team is playing really well. They're explosive on offense. They make a lot of big plays. They run the ball very effectively. Um, I don't really think the quarterback situation, regardless of whatever it is, both guys are very capable uh, they're very similar in style in terms of the way they play. They're big guys, strong arms, accurate passers, and they have ability to make plays with their feet and run quarterback runs. Uh, they have good skill players outside. Uh, their defense is playing, you know, really well. They're mostly a four-down team, but um, they do they do a good job. They've they've played uh, really well together as a unit. Create a lot of negative plays, and um, they've got good specialists on special teams and. Uh, they played extremely well uh, on teams as well. So all the way around, it's going to be a very challenging game for us. Okay, we will start things off with Nick Kelly and Tuscaloosa. Nick, go ahead. You guys were really effective on third down um, against Mississippi State. Uh, what, what do you think clicked there? What, what are the things you guys can replicate? Well, you know, I'm not satisfied with the way we played on third down. I think there was – couple third down and tens and one third down and 12 where we gave up first downs. Um, and I think in those kind of situations, whether it's screen, screens, vertical passing game, whatever, uh, we need to continue to work on trying to be more efficient and effective, um, you know, on third down in terms of getting off the field. And uh, we did do a good job at times, uh, but that's something that we need to continue to work on. Okay, we will go to Michael Casagrande. Michael? Yep, through seven games this season, how would you describe the identity of this team? Well, I, I'd say, you know, right now, uh, based on what we just did, uh, that's still sort of up in the air. Um, you know, if we continue to play like we played in the last game, play for 60 minutes, play hard, support each other, play together as a group, uh, compete in the game, play the next play, uh, not look at the scoreboard, uh, I think that we can – develop a really positive identity. I think we took the first step of that in the last game and hopefully, you know, we'll be able to build on that in the future. We'll go to Aaron Suttles. When you have a player like Will Anderson, who last week very publicly held his team accountable, uh, both I'm guessing internally and he said some stuff to the media. What does that mean to you when you've got a player who who's willing to take on that and, and sort of challenge his teammate? Well, I think you need leadership on every team. Uh, I think that, there's two things about leadership, and I've talked about this before. You know, you have, have to have people who are willing to take responsibility for leadership, which we have some players stepping up on our team to do that. Uh, but the other players on the team have to be willing to accept that leadership and respond to um, the standard that uh, the leaders are trying to get everybody to aspire to. So um, I, I'm happy that that's starting to develop on this team. I think it's really critical uh, to having a successful team that you have really positive, good leadership on your team. We'll go to Charlie Potter next. Charlie. Hey, Coach. Uh, it looked like uh, Byron Young maybe got banged up late in the game. Do you have an update on his status? Uh, he's got a little, you know, shoulder problem. Uh, he's kind of day-to-day. So um, we, 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 we can't make a call on where he is right now. Okay, we'll go to Mike Rodak. Mike, go ahead. 
What was your message to Jai Hall after he publicly expressed some frustration after the game and just how much more complicated are those situations now with transfer rules being as they are? Well, it is what it is. Um, but, you know, look, it still comes down to players creating value for themselves by what they do. Um, you know, I've said this before that, um, you know, there's players that have talent, um, but they have to learn how to use it and they have to use it in an effective way in the way they practice. Uh, it's up to the player uh, to um, impress the coaches that they can be trusted to go in the game and do what they're supposed to do. Um, so when players get frustrated, you know, they sometimes don't respond the way they should uh, in terms of their preparation and focusing on what they need to do to become a good player uh, because they're so concerned about how much they're playing. So, um, you know, if, if players are competitors, uh, they probably will be frustrated that they're not playing. But it's how do you respond to that? You know, what, what do you do to respond to that in a positive way that's going to help you improve your circumstances in the future? And the way to do that is do the right things and go out and practice and play well so that um, not only you, but your teammates and everybody in the organization can trust you to go do what you're supposed to do. We'll go to Tony. Kind of on that note, we did not see uh, Javon Baker uh, travel with the team. What's his status? And then also just the receivers as a whole, how have you seen that, that group, the kind of the backups on that group kind of mature uh, over the season? Uh, they're doing fine, but it's the same thing. You know, players do what they're supposed to do. Um, they travel, they play, they contribute to the team. And that's every player's choice. Every player has a choice to do the things that they need to do to contribute to the team. And everybody's got to buy in. Um, so, you know, players that do that travel, players that um, have issues with that, um, they're not really doing what they should do. I, I mean, that that's our job as a coach to uh, make sure that people are doing the right things. And uh, if they're not doing the right things, there's consequences for that. There's consequences for that life. Uh, there's consequences in that uh, when you're in competitive sports. We'll go to Joey. Go ahead, Joey. Hey coach. Last week you talked about using the, the loss at A&M to kind of, you know, motivate your team, but also use it as an experience to learn from how, how difficult is it to maintain that intensity that you had at Mississippi state after a big win, you know, moving forward in the season? Well, I think that's probably something, you know, that, you know, people like to put negative things that happen to them behind them. Um, but I don't think, you know, that's what you want to do in sports. You know, you want to remember what it feels like when, uh, you don't have success and let that be a motivating factor for you to do the right things, especially when you did the right things and that helped you play better um, to become a part of who you are. If you really learn from the lesson, you know, that's what that's what you would do. We'll go to Steven next. Coach, how are you seeing you know, Trey Sanders become more comfortable working back from all the, the adversity that, he, he's, that he's been through? Well, he's worked really, really hard, and he's making good progress. And it was good to see him get in the game a little bit this last game and make a couple positive runs. And uh, I think that getting his confidence back is a big part of that. Uh, and we're going to continue to work him. And uh, he's have has has a great attitude about what he's trying to do. So I'm sure he's going to just get better and better. Reminder: You can raise your hand if you have a follow up. If not, we've got Aaron Suttles. Go ahead, Aaron. You've been involved with a few games where. There's been sort of a spontaneous rushing of the field. What's it like to be in the middle of that? And there was an incident Saturday night in Tennessee. Do you feel like the conference can do more to protect the players and the coaches? Uh, I don't think that's my question to, to really answer. I mean, you know, I've said this before. We're in the entertainment business. There's a lot of people that come to the games. They've got a lot of passion and excitement for what they do. Um, hopefully, as institutions and fans, we'll always do that in a positive way. I um, mean, I still got a big bruise on my arm here from, you know, what happened after the Texas A&M game. And I can always just look at that as a reminder to what it feels like to be in that situation and uh, motivate myself to try to do a better job with our players. Okay, coach. That's all we got. Thanks. All right. Thank you.